to work on leave it. Um, and I am going to use... I need a good guinea pig. Emily, can I use you? Oh yeah, she'll do some action good that she can say about it. Good okay, so we talked about if your dog barking in the backyard and you open up the gate and yell at him, is it fair to the dog? No. Why not? Exactly, right? So with that same philosophy in mind, if we start telling our dog to leave it, like let's say her dog is lunging at at a video over here and and she starts telling her dog to leave it. Is it really fair that she tells her dog to leave it? No, because she hasn't taught her dog what leave it is, right? So what do we first need to teach the dog before we get to leave it? Okay, Emily, are you that answer? Emily's right. We first need to, we first need to teach the dog to take it. So what Emily's going to do is, and you're getting used quite a bit of food for this. What Emily's going to do is she's going to take a handful of food out. And she's going to simply just feed the dog, and every time she feeds the dog, she's going to tell the dog to take it. So what we're going to do is we're going to teach the dog that when we say take it, you can take the piece of food. Okay? So go ahead. Emily's going to start off by doing this. Take it. Okay, slow down a little bit. So when you do this, the reason why I want Emily to slow down is I want the dog to first chew the food, but I also want the dog to think about the command she's using. If she goes too quickly, the dog will out to, or not out to, the dog will stop listening to Emily and just be focused on, oh, there's another handful of food coming. I want the dog to think about it, okay? So Emily's going to do another take it. So there are a couple of rules to this. When you do a take it, the hand always goes to the dog. The dog does not, at this point, go to the object. The reason being is, if, keep doing that. The reason being is, once you get leave it and take it down, if you're walking your dog through the park and it sees another dog, at any time you can let your dog go and say take it and let your dog run to the other dog. Are you going to? Is that what you said? Yeah, are you going to? No, of course not. Okay. If you're walking down the street and there is a hamburger that's been sitting there for a week, are you going to tell your dog to take it? No. Of course not. Okay. So the philosophy behind the hand always going to the mouth is teaching the dog that when I say leave something alone, at no point are you ever going to be able to go and pick it up or go to it. Okay? So it's very black and white for the animal that take it means I'm going to give you something or I'm going to make it clear that you're allowed to take this. Okay? Does that make sense? Animals sometimes fail. In the take it and leave it, sometimes they're going to fail. But we want to start off from the beginning when we do take it and leave it to teach them to understand, take it means I'm going to give it to you, okay? Okay, so, I'm going to test to see if Emily's dog is understanding take it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to distract her dog for a minute. She's just going to say take it, and if the dog goes back at her, she's going to feed, okay? Take it. Give them a little more distraction. Okay. Wait. Wait. Not yet, Emily. Not yet. Take it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Can't really tell if the dog's getting it, but I think it's an idea. Yeah. So now that she's done a bunch of take it, she says in her mind, okay, she thinks her kind of dog knows what the word take it is. Now we're going to start adding a little bit of leave it to it. However, we're not going to allow the animal to fail. We're not going to put a piece of food right in front of its mouth and say leave it. Because if we do, what's the animal going to do? Of course, it's going to fail, right? So what she's going to do is Emily is going to say leave it. She's going to bring her hand down a little bit. Not enough where the dog can get the food, but enough where it can kind of smell it, where it kind of... And she's going to do this very slowly. So bring her hand down and say leave it. Leave it. Bring your hand down slowly. Down more. Open your hand. Okay, take your hand away. And take it Take it. Good. Okay. So we're going to do another leave it again. Leave it. Bring your hand down to river. Open it. And say take it. Take it. And hand it another one. Hand it and run away. Any idea the reason why I want to feed the dog a couple times at a time? Give her a bigger reward. Yes, but why? What did what happened? What did the dog, dog do? You guys see it? Reinforce the take it. A 
little bit. For a second there, the dog started to go towards the food and then backed off. It could easily have reached the food, but it made the choice to sit back. So we really want to reward for that behavior because we said leave it and the dog did the behavior. We want to really reinforce that. Okay, we're going to do that again. Leave it. Okay. Say take and have it to it. Take it. Good. Okay, so Emma's doing really good. I'm going to have her do something a little different. Don't close your hand this time. I'll your hand. Open it up and you drop it. Okay. And bring your hand down a little quicker and say leave it. Leave it. And take your hand away. Excellent. What happens if Emily does a leave it every time? If Emily does it a leave it every time, the dog's going to stop thinking about the command and say, okay, I know every time the hand comes down, I'm not going to go get food. So when you do this, you want to mix it up. So we just did three leave it's. So if Emily was working with her dog, she'd want to do a couple leave it's and then do some more take it's and then do a leave it, take it. In other words, we want to mix this up a lot with the dog. We want the dog to think about the command. Okay, any questions? Because we're going to do this as a group. All right, Emily, you did wonderful, thank you. Okay, so break out some food. I would charge you for it. I'm bringing them next week. Uh, so totally I've already great. decided. I'm already Okay, so start off with a bunch of take it. Make sure you hand the dog the food. You can do the sitting down if you want. Sometimes that's actually easier sitting down. But you're also welcome to stand up too. It's up to you. Take it. Do what? Do it like do like maybe seven, eight, ten take it. Right, today you can say their name. We'll talk about the name in a minute. Thanks for coming. Take it, take it, check it, take it, leave it. Take it. Okay, so how many take it's do you do? Like nine. Already? Yeah. I want her to do some pause and I'm sorry. I'm going to be too fast. Yeah, go a little slow. We want the dog to actually think about the command. Okay, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. So that's what we say, take it before we go to check. Okay, so do what now? Take it, take it, and put it in Yes, you say take it and then you present the treat. Okay, good question though. Take it. One of the questions that she had to ask is, after the take it command, how fast do you bring your hand down? It's at the same time. Basically, you're presenting a piece of food and telling the dog to take it. Because in a minute, you're going to present a piece of food and tell the dog to leave it. Yeah, but we're not doing it in a minute. We're just doing it. Yeah, you're just doing it. Yeah. Okay, so when you think you've done this about 15 times, stop. Take it. 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 Good job. Take it. Take it. Good job. Okay, so while these guys are finishing up, it's important that you don't give a secondary command. In other words, don't put them in a sit or a down. If they choose to go in a sit and a down, it's fine, but don't give them another command. The reason being is, if you always do sit and then leave it and take it, what's going to happen when the dog's walking, you say leave it? <laughs> exactly. The dog's going to say, wait a minute, I only learned this when I was in a sit, so therefore, I can make the choice to fail. No, we want to teach the dog, it doesn't matter what you're doing, Leave it and take it always mean leave it or take it. Okay, let's stop with the take it. Alright, so now we're gonna do now we're gonna try to implement a little bit of leave it. So when you start with the leave it, you start with a couple take it. Okay? It's kinda like warming the dog up a little bit. So we're gonna do two or three, two or three take it, and then you're gonna present the leave it. The first time you do a leave it, make sure you don't put the food right in front of their mouth. Kind of do what Emily did. Emily was kind of smart. She brought it down a little quick, a little slower, and she was a little, uh, she stopped doing this. Because if you're sitting down, the dog can easily just grab it. Uh, if they go for it, 
Just close your hand. Because we don't want to teach them that we're going to take the hand away. Just close your hand so they can. Because then we're taking the whatever way we want to Exactly. Okay? Good. Close your hand around it. You really want this open hand, just the way, same way you would do with the take it. Okay? Take it, leave it. Leave it. And say take it. Take it. Good. So while you guys are doing this, the moment you see your animal, let's say you say leave it, and the dog stops going for it, or maybe looks away, or you see a change in the behavior, really reward it. Right, right then say take it and hand it to him. So is that a leave it? Okay, watch. Okay, okay, Open your hands up right there. Say leave it. Leave it. Okay, wait. Take it. Now say take it. Leave Good. It. Did you see what happened when you said leave it? He looked at Yeah, exactly. Right when he looks away, then reward him again. Take it. Huh? She had a good question for you. How long do I wait? Do I wait until I get out of the same? So if I say leave it and then give it to him, or do I wait? That is a really good question. So how long do we make the dog leave it? In the beginning stages, if the dog if the dog shows any change of character or behavior, when you say leave it, then immediately say take and reward that for that behavior. But as we do this more and more, you'll ask the dog to leave it longer and longer. You'll vary that. So when you do the take it, you need to jump up and take it. Plus you need to bring the down a little bit lower. You almost want to be about the dog. Take it, go like that. Yep. And put it in the palm of your hand and you do leave it. Leave it. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Close your hand. You got, oh, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> now we're totally confused. Yeah. Take it. Leave it. Take it. Leave it. Take it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Bring your hand away for a minute. Okay, leave open your hand again. Okay. In the palm of your hand, slide bring it down. Leave it. Leave it. Oh, no. That's okay. Leave it. Sorry. Leave it. Leave it. Okay, I'll tell you what. Hold on to the next one. Leave it. Okay. All right, so let's, let's stop what you guys are doing. I want you to watch this young lady for a minute. So you guys are doing really good, but there's a couple things that's going to help you a little bit. Um, can you come out here so Sure. You like to be on the center stage. Yes. Take it. Yes, what was the question? Uh, did you say there was something wrong with taking leave it and having it open? 
in front of his nose? Too soon. Yeah. If you oh. if you wouldn't want to set him up for failure. Okay. So if if your dog's understanding, leave it, then start pushing it, put it right in front of their nose. Okay. But at this stage, you guys are still learning. We don't want to make a distraction too much. I mean, that was nice. He went for your hands, you closed your hand, and then you sat, and then he back at the sat. Yeah, you're just basically wanting to show some sort of self control that you're not going to help. Take it. Take it. Take it. That was a long time. Good, so the next step you need to do is start putting the hand down lower and lower. Maybe it's yeah, 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 closer. So he can almost fell without fail. Okay. Take it. Take it. Only one time. Take it. Leave it. Should you 
Leave the Thanksgiving dinner and turkey on the table, and after the phone, tell your dog to leave it and walk and walk away. No, because it's too soon. So don't put your dog in losing situations. Okay? Don't put your dog in situations where you know you're going to say leave it, and they're probably going to take it. Because then the dog says, wait a minute, maybe leave it's really mean when they're not looking at you to take it. We want to teach the dog that leave it always means I leave it completely alone. As you do this more and more, you start adding more distraction. You start upping the ante. In other words, right now you're just doing hot dog, excuse me, hot dogs in the hand, where you can close your hand, you can take your hand away. Once your dog understands where you can bring out a piece of food and keep it in your hand, the dog doesn't go for it. Then take that piece of food and start setting it on a chair or on the couch or on your knee when you're sitting down or even on the floor and tell the dog to leave it. If you set it on the floor, make sure when you tell the dog to take it, you pick it up and you hand it to the dog. We don't want to teach the dog that when you say take it, it's going to you know, take it off the ground. We want to pick it up and hand it to them. Okay? Any questions on that? So when you come here next week and your dogs are... Focus on another dog. If you've really worked on leaving and take it during the week, it's an excellent time to try to redirect your dog back to you. So let's say, like, I'm going to pick on the Doberman just because I like it and it's got a lot of energy. So let's say another dog starts coming by her and she sees her dog looking at the other dog. At that point, she needs to tell her dog to leave it. Not, to the, not after the point where the dog's lunging and barking because then it's a little bit too late. In other words, the stimulant is too high and the dog is basically kind of tuning her out. This is why the prong collar kind of works by equalizing yeah. us out compared to a nylon collar. A nylon collar, the dog can pull all day long and get long. Here, the dog reaches the end of the leash and says, this is kind of uncomfortable. So, going back to that again, when the dog starts to focus on the problem, at that time, she needs to say, leave it. When the dog does leave the lung, you need to reward it. Okay? Yes. Okay, so I have, um, what about, you know, I tug with the leash and use the correction, leave it at the same time. Is that okay? Okay, because that's... Because she pays attention to the tug maybe more than the leave it. Okay, that's a really good question. And I'm going to pick on you for a minute because I like you, okay? Please. Okay. So, what she's talking about is instead of teaching... Instead of teaching the behavior with food and teaching leave it and take it, she's basically used a little leash pressure, a little leash correction, in order to, use, to, to teach the dog to leave it. In other words, this is kind of what I'd do with this dog. If this was my dog, I hate to say it. If my dog lunged at another dog like this, I would probably check the dog and say leave it and get the point across. There's certain times in life where we need to teach the dog that there's certain... I'll tell you in a minute. There's certain times in life where we need to teach the dog that certain behaviors are absolutely not acceptable. In other words, there's a difference between trying to steal a piece of food out of our pocket and lunging for another dog. It's a difference between your kid stealing a cookie off the table after you told him not to and your child running across the street. What are you going to do? You're going to act a little bit differently, right? So, is a leash correction fair? It's fair depending on what the animal is doing. So we like, with puppies and young dogs, we like to teach the dog, leave it and take it first. Once the dog understands that, then if the dog makes a choice not to do the leave it, and we know the animal knows the behavior, at that point, yes, we'll use the leash as a correction. Okay? So what you did is not necessarily bad. You just are learning a different way. You're learning the kinder way to teach the animal what leave it is, and then when the leash correction comes, they understand. It's kind of like it's kind of like this. Your uh, significant other bought a brand new fishing pole, and you walk home and you smack him in the back of the head. You don't tell them why. You just smack him on the back of the head. They have no idea the reason why they got smacked, right? They just know it hurt. Well, no. What you do is you come home first and say, "Hey, why did you steal the, or why did you buy this fishing pole?" And then you smack him on the back of the head, right? Okay, so here you're teaching your dog what leave it is and what take it is, but you're teaching him more, more so what leave it is. So once she's worked on this and she knows that her dog knows to leave it and her dog says, okay, I know mom said leave it. I'm still going to lunge at that dog. At that point, she would follow through with whatever correction she needs to. Okay, And a correction is really 
And it's a great area in dog training because some people will think a prong collar is horrible. I don't think at PetSmart you can even use a prong collar in their obedience, but they sell it. It's kind of weird. Um, it, the reason being is they don't understand that just because you're correcting your dog does not mean that you are abusing or harming the dog. A lot of times when I explain this to other people, I tell them it's like this. If we have a litter of puppies and come about six, eight weeks, depending on when mom starts to wean them, when the weaning process starts, first mom starts to just kind of move away a little bit. Mom will kind of get a, you know, walk away and the puppies fall off the nipple and, you know, they do something else. And then mom lays down and, of course, the puppies come over and try to feed again. Mom gets up. Pretty soon mom understands that walking away is just not doing it. So every once in a while, when the puppy comes up to feed, mom turns around and she'll act really aggressively. She'll snap at the puppy and she'll growl at it. And what does the puppy do? Backs off backs off, kind of screams well and says, Mom, why didn't you do that? Did that puppy just learn a lesson? Yes. That lesson yes. was better taught that way. Mom tried the other way, it didn't work, and so Mom said, okay, now I have to do it this way. But we want to get the opportunity for the dog to leave alone before we reach that point. Does that make sense? That's a really good question. Uh, you also asked about the name. The name is, a, the name is one of those things where some trainers will say, always use their name before a command. And then you have me that says, if you, can use, if you cannot use a dog's name, it's better. The reason being is if we have a dog and we're teaching, let's say Fido, we're teaching Fido to sit. And we say, Fido sit, Fido sit, Fido sit, Fido sit, Fido sit. Pretty soon, what are we pairing sit with? Fido. Fido. So pretty soon, all we have to do is say Fido, and what's the animal do? Sit. Exactly. So, in my rule of book, unless you have three or four dogs you're training all at the same time, cut the name out because it's kind of like, come on, come here, come over here, or dang it, dog. Um, we want to keep our commands very simple. So, sit, down, come, stay, not, Fido, this, Fido, that, Fido, that. Okay? However, sometimes engagement, we can use the dog's name a little bit to get the dog kind of focused back on us. It's not necessarily bad at the beginning stages, but it's a habit that's kind of hard to wean out. I've seen people on the competition field, they'll train and train and train, they go into the ring, and they'll start using their dog's name, and pretty soon they get marked down because it's called a double command. In other words, when they say, Fido, do this, the judge says, well, what's this command, Fido or this? So it's a habit that's hard to get out of, but sometimes you have to use it. All right? Any other questions? Regarding leave it, name, when you can correct your dog or not. When when you had me say leave it and then close my hand, put it behind, when because then you just had me say leave it again, what when and how do I know to say it more than once? Ah. So it's really at the stage of the dog showing you that he, if he understands the command. Okay. If if you bring it out and you say leave it one time and you can see that the dog backs off, obviously he's getting he's understanding. However, if every time you bring it out, he's going for it, it tells us he's not quite there yet. He hasn't quite heard what leave it is. Um, and it, it, honestly, it's kind of, you're, you're mixing things up. You're trying to read the dog. Is the dog understanding it? Do I have the consistency? And is it time to push it? So the reason why I had you put your hand behind your back is he was starting to understand the concept. Okay. Instead of him doing a take it, because he's so food high driven, too many take it's, just overloads his mind. His mind says, oh, I know it's coming out. So instead of putting the food away in the bag, I had you simply put the food out of it, out of sight, bring it slowly back out and do another leave it, because I want to do two leave it's in a row. So since I brought it and then I brought it back. Exactly, that's another leave it. So the another thing I had her do with her dog is, do you notice there was one time when she was doing a leave it, her dog started to lick her hand, the food is too much of a temptation visually. So when the dog sees the food, it says, I want all over that. So instead, what we did is we completely closed her hand, and the dog started licking and nodding the hand a little bit. The moment the dog stopped licking at the hand, then we opened the hand and said, take it. So it's a, it's a kind of a step back for the animal, and it's not too much pressure too soon. Make sense? Yes. Okay.